How many lovers have you made today? Chapter 16, Baby Steps. Are there any concerns for an attack today? Luna asks Blossom, as they overlook a map of Equestria. That would be unlikely. With security at its highest today, only a fool would consider attacking now. Blossom looks to the changeling figures that sit on the map, only a few steps away from the Equestrian border. Though it wouldn't be far-fetched to assume they'd send scouts to gather information, if they haven't already. Luna sets her jaw. Why now, of all times, are the changelings in motion? It's been millennia since they've crawled from their nests in the Badlands and try to cause any trouble. What's their motive in all this? Surely not to take over Equestria. The changelings are solitary creatures and don't care to make friends, political or otherwise. So attacking any region would be akin to suicide. Luna shivers some. One memory that haunts her the most was when the changelings would flood over the battlefield to consume the Fallen's essence. They took no side, but that wouldn't stop them from taking the appearance of a fallen comrade and slicing the throat of a pony to feast on something fresher. It got so bad that both sides agreed to a temporary truce to eradicate the changelings before returning to their battle. Never knowing who was friend and who was foe kept Luna up most nights. In those times, Nightmare Moon would whisper to her the most, and she could do nothing more than allow those hollow words lull her to sleep. Shaking those thoughts away, she gets back on track. Do we have any inkling of what their motives are? Blossom takes a moment, herself also falling back to the war, and when she first encountered changelings. War is Tartarus, but those creatures exist on a level lower than that. To her, there was only one reason why they came, and now should be no different. Well, they only showed up during the war to eat. Perhaps after all this time, that feast has given way to hunger. This is a disturbing observation, but one that Luna can't deny. From what they could glean from those creatures, they only live through consuming the essence of others. To what extent this ability works is entirely unknown, but Luna knows that not even death can stop them from feasting on a pony. Though they preferred taking captives alive. <sighs> I unfortunately agree with you. If that's the case, they'll only grow desperate as starvation sets in. I'll monitor their movements. Blossom assures. Either way, I believe you have a festival to attend. Luna nods. Correct. Outstanding work, Blossom. I'll stop by soon for a status report. Good day. Blossom gives a head bow as Luna leaves. Luna takes a moment to take in this entire situation. She must be vigilant to ensure no harm comes to her ponies. Anon continues to look out the window and watch as the building and ponies roll by on their way to the Colosseum. For the most part, he's been thinking about how to handle things moving forward regarding his relationship with Celestia. Fluttershy, Pinky, and Applejack are prime examples of what he should come to expect from ponies who catch a glimpse of the feather on his chest. It's obvious they want to ask about it, but none have said a word. Instead, they kept to their conversations. Celestia has also kept her silence on it, giving Anon the power to control the situation. So, he's been thinking. What's the most effective way of dealing with this? The answer's obvious, but it makes him nervous. Celestia will have to make an announcement to her ponies and confirm her relationship. She's been wearing a ring on her horn, and Anon has the feather, so the gossip will start as soon as they exit the carriage and walk around the festival. There's no other choice in dealing with this. Celestia is a princess. They can't keep things between them secret. For a moment, he considers hiding the feather, but decides against it. This is proof of their love for one another. He can't just hide it and pretend it doesn't exist. Not after everything that's happened. There's a lapse in conversation, so Anon gets this over with. Celestia and I are dating. He doesn't look their way, opting to keep his gaze out of the window instead. I'd rather you not make a big deal out of it. Looking away from the window, Anon turns his sights to Celestia. I think you should make an announcement about us. It'll be obvious to everyone once we're at the festival. She gives him a loving smile, while searching his eyes with a questioning gaze. Are you certain about this? I do not take this decision lightly because everything will change once the truth comes out. Anon returns a reluctant smile. Well, I'm not certain about anything, but I can't lie about loving you. Celestia says nothing and instead pulls Anon close as she holds him tightly. Understood. At the opening speech, I will tell everyone. She pulls back to face Anon. Do you regret picking me? 
Being in Celestia's embrace like this does things to Anon's mind. He can't help but feel an almost uncontrollable urge to rely how much she means to him. So where words fail him, he can only answer in a way he knows she would. He leans in and kisses her. Once they pull away, Anon quickly looks back out the window. Oh. Fluttershy speaks up. Well, I'm sure everyone will be happy to hear that you found someone you fancy, Princess. Thank you, Fluttershy. I can only hope some will give us the proper space. But I know all too well that many won't. Anon and I are new to this, so figuring out these emotions without outside influence will be difficult. When did all this happen? Pinky pops up between Celestia and Anon. Celestia chuckles. Are you certain you wish to hear about it? The girls give a nod. Even AJ's ears perk up as she continues to look out the window. All right. Well, I found out my feelings for Anon some time ago. Anon ignores this as he continues to stare off into nothing. Something isn't right. At this moment, he'd expect himself to be thinking about all the horrible things that may happen when Celestia gives her announcement. But those thoughts are absent. And the only thing to take their place is that cold embrace. Entering the Colosseum, Anon notices the enormous crowd waiting just outside the gates as they cheer and bow for their princess. Soon everything is replaced with giant ivory walls that stretch far past his vision in the carriage, before the light of the sun breaks through into a vast array of stands that litter the front entrance. He's honestly impressed by how much they squeezed in one area. There are plenty of ponies who run these stands, and are hard at work doing any last-minute changes before the crowd sets in. Anon even catches a glimpse of Bonbon bon and Lyra working their stand, but he rides past before they notice him. He'll pay them a visit soon to make sure everything is running smoothly. As they ride through what feels like a never-ending assortment of shops, it breaks open to an area where various carnival-like games are played. Then past that is the large stadium where most of the athletic events are being held. They carry on to the back, where Anon notices Shining Armor standing in wait for the carriage. Once it stops, the door is opened, and Celestia grabs Anon's attention by bumping him slightly with her wing. When he looks at her, she gives him a smile, before nodding her head for him to exit. He gets out, and the others follow, with Celestia being the last. Shining Armor bows low for her before rising to his hooves. He doesn't look at anyone but the princess. We're ready to escort you to the podium. He announces. One moment, please. Celestia turns to Twilight. Show your friends around before things get hectic. I'll see you later. Uh, alright, um, have fun. Twilight says that last part hesitantly. You too. Celestia moves over to Anon and rests a wing on her shoulder, as Twilight escorts her friends back over to the stands. So much to do and so little time, it seems. Hopefully for only today. Anon and her make their way to a podium that sits in the middle of the stadium. Clearly, this is the best place for her to greet her ponies both before the festival starts and at the end. With practiced grace, Celestia walks up the steps and stands in wait for her subjects to gather. Shining in a small platoon set up a perimeter around the podium to keep ponies a safe distance. Now, all Celestia and Anon have to do is wait for the crowd to gather around for the announcements. Celestia looks over to Anon. What would you like to do once the festival starts? He shrugs. Um, what are you gonna do? Whatever you wanna do. Well, it seems Anon will not get out of this easily. Then again, he has been trying to be more involved with this relationship, so even though this is his first event, he'll try to take the lead. Well, I'd like to stop by and check on Bonbon bon and Lyra. That can be arranged. I have to chat with Fancy Pants afterwards to double check if things are still running well on his end. Uh, what else? Anon rubs his chin in thought. Uh, this is harder than he thought. He's honestly fine as long as Celestia is there. I guess playing a few games wouldn't hurt. Do you have anything in mind? I... Uh, Anon can feel a wave of fatigue weighing on him. Being put on the spot like this in a situation he's not familiar with, well, it's throwing his head for a loop. He's rapidly trying to think of what he saw, what they could do, and everything else that entails. Just as he feels himself becoming lost, a wing rests on his shoulders. Sorry. Celestia looks at him guiltily. I let myself get carried away. How about we walk around and see what catches our fancy? Anon calms down. Yeah, that sounds good. She hugs him. I love you. 
I love you too. Once they break apart, Celestia looks over to see ponies already making their way over. It won't take long before they arrive, and with their audience, she shall start the festival and proclaim her love for Anons of the public. Though no matter what happens, their relationship will be in their hooves, or hands, respectively. There's so many places! Pinky proclaims. Well, it is the festival, and businesses will thrive today. Twilight remarks as she points out a few other shops. Then she finds her gaze drifting over to Anon's candy store. Shouldn't we be joining these other ponies for the announcement? AJ states. Twilight shakes herself back to the present. Oh, you can. I have to start my duties for the festival. Uh, maybe I'll see you later? Of course. Fluttershy answers. It was nice talking to you again, Twilight. Same. Twilight notices a certain flutter in her heart. It had been a while since she spent time with her friends. While they appear more mature than she last recalls, She's happy that who they are hasn't changed. Before leaving... Twilight points to Anon's shop. That's Anon's candy store. I highly suggest trying it if you haven't already. Will do! Pinky confirms. Twilight gives them a soft smile before looking down at Spike. Show them around and have some fun. Are you sure? I don't mind coming with you. I'll be fine. She rubs his head. Go on! Besides, the Crusaders haven't seen you in a long time. Alright, but if you need any help, you know how to reach me. Twilight gives him a nod as they set off towards the gathering of ponies. Today differs from yesterday. She feels confident and ready to take on her task. With a smile she hasn't given since before everything that happened, Twilight trots to her first assignment. Finally, it's time for Celestia to start the event. A microphone sits in front of her to broadcast her voice all over Cantalots for those who are still making their way or are too busy with other things to attend. She's as calm and collected as she always is, and when briefly looking over at Anon, she can't help the smile that breaks past her princess mask before she turns back to face the crowd. Welcome, my little ponies! The crowd gives a cheer before falling silence. Today, we gather to celebrate and watch creatures of all types push themselves to their limits to attain glory. Many have tried most of their lives just for the chance to be number one, but such a title is not given lightly. Though in the end, we shall praise the blood, sweat, and tears that have been shed, as now is the official start of the festival. The crowd lets out a collective roar, and Celestia allows them to burn some of their enthusiasm before raising a hoof to calm them. I have one more announcement to make before you leave, though it is rather personal. The crowd quiets down immediately and looks curiously at the princess. It would not be right to keep you all in the dark, and I'd prefer it not to be passed around as a rumor. So, I would like to officially announce that I've begun dating. Another collective roar leaves the ponies, with even some whistles here and there. Celestia smiles before waving an on over. Please treat him with kindness. She says while placing a wing on her shoulder, pulling him to her side. We'd only ask that you give us some space, as we're new to this sort of thing. The crowd continues to cheer. Thank you all for understanding. Now go, and enjoy the festivities! The ponies give a round of applause before walking off. Anon can tell a lot of them are talking to one another, most likely about Celestia dating. He lets out a sigh of relief that nothing crazy happened. See? It wasn't so bad. Celestia states. I guess. How about we head over to your store? Yeah, let's do that. Taking his place by Celestia's side, a bit of optimism washes over Anon for a brief moment. But something about today doesn't feel right. Either way, he'll try and go with the flow and enjoy his time with Celestia. That changeling attack is gonna happen, it's just asking for it. And here, let's get on to our non-hostile donators. Top donators, Jesse Smith, Star 630, Badass Waffle, only one thing, Sura, Ryan, and Calidus. Match Effect, Chalk, Tia, Flucy, Dark Side, Raiden, Narwhal's Black Runner, Pastel Skies, Austin, awesome Rollins, Sword, Brother, Mortar, Dominic, Con Library, Rune Scythe, Will, Chris, Winky, Rice, Soul, Shadow, Moon, Luigi, Chance, Across, Big Smoke, Bobcat, Murder, Princess, Jet, Little Mighty, Solar Symphony, and many more awesome people. Thank you all so much for watching this video, and love life to the fullest.